Well, you're totally wrong, Boimler. Collector's ships don't smell like ass. They smell like musty giant Vulcan bones. Hello, geeks, freaks, and all those unique. This is MC Frodus. We're already halfway through season three of Star Trek Lower Decks as we head into episode five, Reflections. I think this episode is unique in that neither plot is really the B story to the other. Instead, we have two A plots, both of equal importance in the plot of this episode and the ongoing season. Because these plots are pretty equally weighted, I'm going to talk about them separately. First, we have the Cerritos needing to fulfill recruitment quotas. This is such a weird small thing that I would only expect from Lower Decks. It's something we don't notice on the flagships, because the Enterprise probably has a very easy time recruiting people into Starfleet. They're hitting all these planets first, so when a new alien decides they like the idea of Starfleet, they get first crack at them. Meanwhile, the Cerritos is stuck with job fairs on planets that are within the Federation borders. Mariner has a point that the job fair booth isn't good at getting people into Starfleet. Starfleet is pretty ubiquitous in places like this, and it doesn't need some ensigns convincing people to join. But, as Lower Decks has been teaching us since Season 1, Starfleet has a lot of bullshit they have to do that is glossed over in the more glamorous series like TOS and TNG. But Mariner and Boimler don't get that luxury. This season of Lower Decks is really about breaking Mariner to find out if Starfleet is what she wants to do. She's always been protected by her parents, no matter what she did. She might have been sent to the brig, but that was the equivalent of having a time out. She could still do what she wanted without impunity. This means that Mariner has a very unrealistic view of Starfleet. Now that she's getting a more realistic view with her work under Ransom, Mariner is coming to a crossroads. She's either going to have to buckle down and use the skills we know she has to rise in the ranks to get away from the shit jobs she's getting stuck with, or she's going to have to go the way of Petra and break away from Starfleet. I've seen it suggested that Mariner's interactions with Petra were quasi-flirtatious, and I don't really think that's the case myself, first of all because Mariner and Jennifer OTP. I think Petra was seductive, but not in a romantic or sexual manner. She was saying things that were meant to appeal to Mariner. First, I think it's very interesting that the episode in which we find out Mariner has a degree in xenohistory is the one where she gets an invitation to become an archaeologist. Also, I think what Petra does, steal the Grand Nagus' scepter back for presumably Rom, is something that would appeal to Mariner's sense of morality, doing what's good rather than what's right. This is all tying to my prediction that the Lower Deckers are going to find themselves going different directions by the end of the season. Well, before I thought Mariner might be promoted because of her acquiescence to Ransom's tutelage, now I'm thinking she's going to figure out that Starfleet actually isn't for her. Even with her jaded attitude, Mariner actually has a very idealistic view of Starfleet. But this view is being chipped away. The more Mariner delves into the proper way of Starfleet, the more she's going to realize it's not actually for her. Meanwhile, we do have Boimler along with Mariner, and yet again his storyline is the opposite of Mariner's. We're seeing a continuation of bold Boimler, but this time we're seeing a bit of the darker side of that boldness. Boimler's allowing his aggression to come out, and it's kind of a good thing. Yes, he takes it to his Boimler extremes, but a passionate, full-throated defense of Starfleet is something we have seen from the greats, and I think Ransom is glad to see Boimler moving away from the sniveling toadying. Again, there's still a balance that needs to be struck, but I think things are looking pretty good for Boimler. But the plot the title comes from is the other plot, and it's the plot that makes this episode so good. Rutherford exploring his past. He's being plagued by dreams. Unfortunately, they're not his dreams about the Kelvinverse. Glad I'm not the only one who has those. And I'm getting my hopes up that the repeated references are priming people for movie four. And instead, they're nightmares about the accident in which he got his implant. When Tendi purges his memory cache, a past version of Rutherford's personality from before he got the implant comes out. This version of Rutherford is 10 years younger, so I'm guessing he's about 16, 17. He swears he's misogynistic, just a total asshole. So basically a 16, 17-year-old dude. But it's so jarring considering what we've seen of Rutherford up until now. And it's a bit upsetting to think that all of his personality comes from his implant. So I personally don't think his entire personality comes from the implant. I think part of it is just age. But certainly he has lost a lot of his memories, far more than he ever thought he did. Before, we just thought that Rutherford had lost a year of time. But now we know that there are years that are missing or have been tampered with. 
In my predictions of Lower Deckers going their separate ways, I haven't made any predictions about Rutherford, because there wasn't really anything on him yet. But I think now we're getting a clear idea. Rutherford has a mission he has to go on. He has to find out about himself and explore whatever Black Ops Section 31 program he was associated with. Is Rutherford a sleeper agent? Can he actually find out more about his past? I think this is going to be the plot for him going forward. Trek has a long history of pitting people against themselves, and I think this is one of the best versions of it. First of all, it's not at all based on mixed ancestry characters fighting themselves. Instead, it's about facing your own history. Past Rutherford is a jerk, but he's not wrong about wanting his body back. He's had his life stolen from him by shadowy figures. Of course, that doesn't mean the current Rutherford isn't entitled to his existence, too. He's been around for ten years. And while this episode shows past Rutherford fading away, I think somewhere down the line there will be some sort of integration of his memories, if not the personality. I've noticed as Lower Jacks has gone on, it's becoming a lot more encompassing of Star Trek lore. When it first started, it was very heavy on TNG references. But especially with this episode, we're getting a lot more Voyager references. And I really like that. And it's not just obvious stuff. Having Rutherford and his mental team in the drive racing suits... I find it interesting that what makes our current version of Rutherford win is the idea of his friends. But it's only the idea of them. Rutherford was actually doing this all on his own. I really think Lower Decks is starting to evolve as a show. It's not just a string of jokes and references to past Star Trek series. These characters are going on some pretty heavy character journeys. And I think we're going to be getting some dark stuff as Mariner becomes more disillusioned by Starfleet and Rutherford uncovers whatever immoral program he was forced into. This episode was fantastic. It's one of the best of the season so far and is in the top five of the whole series. There is a sophistication in the writing of this episode that I think really shows that Lower Decks is not just the funny show of Star Trek, but really a deep part of the legacy. So comment down below with your thoughts on Lower Decks Reflections. If you like my videos, subscribe to my channel. I do videos about Star Trek, Star Wars, and lots of other geeky things. We're also gearing up towards my Halloween series. If you want to support me, please visit my Patreon. You can also buy me a coffee, or you can go to my Redbubble and TeePublic to buy my geeky graphic designs. You can find me on all of those and all of the social networks under MC Frodus. So until next time, live long, and may the Force be with you.